Hello everyone, my name is Chris Arsenault and I'm a solutions architect with the Veeam Cloud and Service Provider team based out of North America. Today I'll be considering the topic, configuring the Veeam plugin for VMware Cloud Director. To get things started, let's do a brief review uh, of the architecture involved for the plugin. Now, if you're already familiar with our Veeam self-service backup portal uh, for VMware Cloud Director, uh, you'll notice there's no changes here. It's the identical architecture required for it. And, and there's good reason for that, as the plugin itself uh, leverages the Veeam self-service backup portal for most of its functionality, as well as some, adding some goodness in there as well, as we'll cover in just a bit. So with that in mind, you still see Cloud Director, Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager Server, and a Veeam Backup and Replication Server. Note that the Veeam Self-Service Backup Portal is hosted off of the Enterprise Manager Server itself, uh, by default off of port 9443. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as a different, that's different in the plugin, is the way you authenticate. So in using the self-service backup portal, traditionally without the plugin, uh, your users would have two different times to log in. They'd log in to VCD, to its web UI, and then using a different uh, browser window tab, uh, they would open up another web portal to the, the Veeam self-service portal, uh, and then they would log into that using their VCD credentials. Now, with the plugin involved, single sign-on is baked in, meaning your tenants only have to log in once to the Cloud Director instance itself. So, and then once they're logged in, we use the already authenticated VCD session to validate that user's credentials. Uh, what organization are they in? What role has been assigned to that user? Uh, by default, users that have the organization administrator role assigned to them have access to the self-service portal. Once this has been validated, the user is then logged in to our self-service backup portal, uh, seamless to them. All they did was click on a plugin within the Cloud Director Web UI, and the user has full access to the self-service backup and restore operations. Uh, Key things that are going to be required for the plugin uh, is you need a trusted security certificate, SSL certificate, TLS certificate. Uh, that needs to be trusted by the user's browser, uh, i.e. not self-signed. Uh, reason for this is, you know, the cloud director and enterprise manager will be talking to one another. Uh, your user's browser doesn't know that they're trusted, right? Uh, and so if it's not, if you try to use a self-signed cert, you're going to encounter issues. So uh, not to mention that it, it definitely looks more professional uh, with a trusted certificate anyway. So just remember that uh, even whenever you're doing your lab environments, uh, that's going to be, be, could be something that could cause you issues whenever you're in testing. With that in mind, uh, let's pivot over to a demo. First step. Uh, that you take when it comes to uh, you know installing, updating the plugin is actually validating that the Veeam self-service backup portal uh, is functioning correctly. Uh, now, while I'm not going to go into detail on on these minute configurations, as that's covered in a different video, uh, configuring Veeam self-service backup portal. Um, I'm logged into Enterprise Manager right now, the admin interface, as a portal administrator. And if I go to configuration here and the self-service tab, we see that I have one VCD organization that's been configured called VCSP How To, and I've assigned that organization a quota of 100 gigabytes. Uh, so now that I've got that set up, I'm going to attempt to log in. Uh, to the self-service portal uh, as the user would. And so at this point, uh, note the URL here. This is my enterprise manager server, forward slash vcloud, forward slash the tenant name, in this case, which is vcsp how to. And then here you'll notice something a little bit different from 11a, uh, which you can or cannot, you know, you don't have to put in here, uh, but 
if you have multiple VCD instances, uh, then it makes for a cleaner experience. But here's your URL, and you can find that in our documentation. Um, I'm going to log in using an account I created. It's an organization administrator account. And here we go. This is a successful login. I logged in using this account, which is an organization administrator in the VCSP how-to organization. So this is successful, okay? Uh, if we did not log in, if we encountered an error, we'd want to troubleshoot that prior to try to install and configure the plugin, because that would cause us to waste our cycles, right? Uh, when the issue could have been identified here at first. So let's go ahead and sign out of here. And now we're going to go on to plugin configuration. So now let's pivot back over. And we see that I'm logged into our, my VMware Cloud Director instance to the provider portal. Okay. And I'm logged in as a system administrator. Okay. Now starting with Cloud Director 9.7, uh, the uh, VMware has included by default a plugin. Um, now I'm running 10.2, the latest version uh, currently, um, and this plugin is called Customize Portal. If you're running 9.7, I believe the plugin is called uh, Plugin Lifecycle Management. Uh, it's the same plugin, and whenever you, you click on that plugin, it looks identical once it loads. So from here, we're going to click Upload Plugin. We're going to select the plugin file. This is a good time to tell you where the plugin file exists. <laughs> so here uh, I have mounted the Veeam backup application ISO to my operating system. Uh, I've went into the plugins folder, the vCloud director folder, and then plugin.zip. This is the plugin. And we'll click open. And if all of this metadata shows up properly, you know you've done this correctly, okay? Uh, we see the name of the plugin. The latest current version at the time of recording is 11.1.4. Uh, and we'll click Next. You will always make sure that the scope is checked for both server providers and tenants. Um, and then most of the time, you're, you're going to want all tenants checked here as well. Uh, what this does is, if a, if a plugin isn't published to a tenant, then whenever the, the that tenant is selecting their plugins, they're not going to see it if it's not published, right? So most of the time you'll want to publish this for all of your tenants so that all of your tenants uh, can see the Veeam Backup Replication plugin uh, within their VCD session. So now we're gonna click next and finish. We see the plugin pops up down here. However, right now we do not see the plugin in the dropdown like we did before, or we, we, we still don't see it yet. Now, that's because plugins are loaded whenever VCD is loaded. So if we hit refresh, it's going to force VCD to reload, which is going to force VCD to reload its plugins. And now when we click the dropdown, we see data protection with the now, because I'm logged in to the provider portal as a system administrator, whenever I click on this plugin, which is the next step, uh, this is what I see. I see plugin configuration. Now, what we're looking for here, and we give you an example, is we want the beginning uh, host name of the backup enterprise manager server, because that's where the self-service portal is hosted. Uh, now, by default, as I mentioned previously, that port is port 9443. Uh, for my lab environment, uh, I'm using port 443, though. So if I, here is my address, https, colon, port slash, port slash, veen.arsenal.ninja. Uh, the default port for HTTPS is port 443, which is why you don't see me writing this at the end. Okay, and now I'm going to click save. Now, whenever I click save, what this did is it actually went out to all of my tenants and it created a piece of metadata uh, on each of my VCD organizations, each of my tenants. 
So let me show you what that looks like. So I click resources and then I click VCSP how to because this is the organization we're testing with and then I click metadata. Notice now we have a piece of metadata called beam dash endpoint and then the value is what we just entered in the configuration. Okay, this tells our plugin whenever the tenant goes to use it. Hey, here's the enterprise manager server. I also show you this because when you create new tenants, right, you onboard a new tenant, they're not going to have this piece of metadata by default. Just because you clicked publish to all tenants in that previous step we did does not mean that they have this piece of metadata. And so in your onboarding process, whether you want to programmatically create it by using VCD APIs to create this metadata, or whether uh, after in your onboarding process, you instruct your engineers to go to the plugin and click save, right? Uh, that's two perfectly valid methods to, to create that piece of metadata that I just showed you. Now, the last piece we need to do before we go and test the plugin for the tenant uh, is we need to log into our Enterprise Manager server, open up the Internet Information Services Manager, uh, which is installed by default uh, whenever IIS is installed on a server. Uh, we're going to select the server here. We're going to click the little drop down. We're going to click Application Pools. And then we're looking for the Veeam backup pool. Uh, and now we're going to click recycle. Okay, this is refreshing the settings, forcing a settings refresh, uh, which uh, now that we've add, we've configured the plugin, this essentially forces that configuration to come into effect. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to pivot over to uh, a new VCD session where I'm going to log in as the tenant for the VCSP how to organization. And I'm going to log in using the same account I logged in, I used previously when testing the Veeam self service backup portal. So now that we're logged in, we'll click the drop down. And notice I'm logged in as an organization administrator. I'm going to click the drop down and click data protection with Veeam. Note that it looks identical to what it looks like when you're logged in as a system administrator with the big difference that whenever you click on it, you're not taken to the configuration screen, but you're automatically logged in to the Veeam self-service portal. Once you've hit this, you know that everything's configured correctly and, and it's a job well done. Last but not least, what we covered in today's videos can be found in Veeam documentation as well. So here are the links to corresponding documentation, uh, as well as at the end, I've got a few personal favorites. Uh, I keep these uh, links for Veeam documentation, Veeam Hub, uh, bookmarked in my own browser for, for easy perusal, uh, as that makes sure that I always have the most accurate and up-to-date information uh, in whatever uh, Veeam activity I'm doing, whether it's, it's doing operations or automating. Thank you all for attending and I hope you found this useful.